Make a wish, Jeff. You don't see too many old wells like this one anymore. No, you don't. For one, they're dangerous. Yep. And two, people are nuts. And who knows what they'll dump down there and contaminate the water. Or who they'll dump down there, right? Right. I'm going to get back up from the edge now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we've seen a lot of the same horror movies. And while this isn't the exact well we're looking for, we are looking for a haunted well in Sabattis, Maine today. All right. What's the story with the Sabattis well? So they say 20 years ago, some kids lowered a friend down there, and when he came back up, his hair turned white, and he lost his mind. I'm Jeff Belanger, and welcome to episode 262 of the New England Legends podcast. And I'm Ray Osier. Thanks for riding along with us as we chronicle every legend in New England one story at a time. You know, it takes a village to find and bring you these stories, and we're glad you're a part of ours. So many story leads come from you, so please reach out to us anytime on our social media pages. Contact us through our website or stop us on the street. (laughs) We love hearing from you guys. And be sure to tell a friend or two about our show. It's how our community grows. You can always refer them to our website where we have an archive of all the past episodes, plus some video content from the New England Legends television series that you can watch right now on Amazon Prime. And you can see an appearance schedule for me and Ray. My story tour is making stops all over New England this fall and Ray's band, the Pub Kings. Now, before we go looking for this haunted well, we want to take just a minute to tell you about our sponsor, Nuati Herbals. Nuati Herbals has been very busy this summer. They've launched two new flavored teas, peach nilla and blueberry cinnamon. Mm, both are delicious. Yes, they are. And Nuati Herbals just launched their new Busy Paws hand cream, which is great because as the weather starts to dry out, so do my hands, Ray. Mm. And I have no shame in admitting I use hand cream. <laughs> Jeff gives the best handshakes with those soft hands. <laughs> I appreciate that, Ray. <laughs> now, if you've been listening to the last couple of episodes, you know Ray and I both got COVID last month. That's right. I got to tell you, I drank the healer tea from Nuati Herbals every day I was sick. Same. And and it helped me feel better faster. Uh, I went through one week where I felt like I had the worst man cold in human history. And the healer tea helped open up my sinuses and and relieve some of that awful pressure. I love that Nuati Herbals products are made from all natural ingredients. I spent decades of my life polluting myself. (laughs) So it feels good to do a little reset with the teas, balms, and soaps. Let Nuati Herbals help support your healthy lifestyle. Check out the Nuati Herbals website to see all of their great products. And you, you get 20% off your order when you use the promo code LEGENDS20 at checkout. Visit NuatiHerbals.com. That's N-U-W-A-T-I, Herbals, with an S, dot com. All right, Jeff, so how are we going to find this well? So that's the thing. We don't have a whole lot to go on other than it's the back of a Sabata Cemetery near the ruins of an old barn. Got it. All right, here's a little more info on Sabattis. The closest city is Lewiston, Maine, about five miles to the west. Sabattis is a small town. Mm -hmm. It was founded in 1788, and today boasts a population of just over 5,000 people. And it has no less than nine cemeteries. Nine. Nine. So we'll have our work cut out for us. Uh, Luckily, with a little recon, we were able to hone in on Sanborn Cemetery in the northwestern part of town. Sanborn Cemetery is pretty small. What do you think? Maybe about a quarter of an acre in size or so? Yeah, that sounds about right. So there's 230 people buried here. But I guess what we're looking for is behind the cemetery. Yeah, that's right. So we'll head back toward the woods and back in time to 2001 to check out this story. It's late summer of 2001 here in Sabattis, Maine. The kids aren't back in school just yet, and like lots of young people, a group of preteens are trying to squeeze as much adventure as possible out of summer before it's over. And then comes the dare. Mm. While playing in the back of the cemetery near the dilapidated ruins of an old barn, this group of kids notices an old well. The oldest kids dare the youngest to go down into the well. A well, they say, is haunted. Hmm, and we know how dares go, don't we? We do. No one wants to back down from a deer. And this youngster is no different. So the group finds an old tire and some rope and agree to lower the boy down into the well. Okay, the rope seems sturdy enough. And the tire's just over the edge of the well. I can see the boys climbing onto the tire. And now they're lowering him down. Wow, this well must be deep. I mean, they're still lowering him. All right, I'm going to take a peek over the edge. Okay. Oh, wow. I I can't even see him, Jeff. He's in total darkness, and it's still going. 
okay, they've stopped. This is getting uncomfortable. Do you think he's okay down there? Yeah, I'm not sure. I, uh, no one's smiling up here anymore. Guys, I think you should pull him up. Yeah, get him up here. Okay, they're, they're pulling the rope up. I even heard a sound come from below this whole time. I'm getting a bad feeling. Okay, he's just about back to the top. And I can see the other kids grabbing for... Oh my god, what happened to him? The boy's hair just turned completely white. Look at his face. He looks like he's aged decades. I, he looks like an old man. Something is very wrong with this boy. Well, the kids are now helping the trouble boy back home. Yeah, and I think we should get out of here too. So, Jeff, I heard the young boy was committed to a nearby mental institution. Oh, I, and I don't think we can ever unsee what we just saw. No. And that brings us back to today. Okay, so more of an urban legend this week. A fun one. But I have a hard time believing it's true. It reminds me of that movie, The Ring. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, this is one of those stories that we've had our eye on for years. I mean, it shows up on websites that list weird main stories. And it's in multiple books about main legends. And the story hardly varies. It's like everyone is repeating the same thing over and over. We trace this story to a strange main blog post from 2007 who tips their hat to an article by Mark LaFlame of the Sun Journal newspaper out of Lewiston, Maine. LaFlame's article was published in 2007 and claims the story took place six years prior, which lands us at 2001. The only problem is the link on the Sun Journal website is dead. It's gone. We searched and searched their website but found nothing. Plus, you'd think if the story were true, those young boys would mostly be around today and we could talk to them about it. Sure. Or we could visit the mental hospital and interview the victim. Right. You'd think that. However, it turns out Mark LaFlame's article is the source on the story. So we reached out to him with an email. Mark emailed back pretty quick, too. Yeah, he did. And this was his entire reply to my email. And I quote, I get asked about this a lot. The funny thing is, I'm pretty sure the concept of the well is something I made up many years ago for an Urban Legends writing contest. I wrote up a few fictional stories such as that one, but the one about the well is the one that stuck. As far as I know, there's no such place. I live right next to Sabatis and have never heard about a real-life version of the legend. I kind of feel bad relating that. So he made this up? He made this up. Wow. I was dying to know more. So I emailed him back asking if we could interview him. Uh, he said he'd be willing to talk to us. And he also added, and I quote, I'm impressed that you wrote back. Most researchers go completely dark once I explain the genesis of the story. Well, we followed up with Mark Daly to try to talk to him, but he stopped answering our emails as of this recording. I'm not sure why he couldn't talk to us, but Mark is still actively writing for the Sun Journal newspaper. Ordinarily, this is the kind of story we would pass on because there's just not much meat on these bones, you know? Uh, it never sounded real to us, but it kept showing up in various books and websites like a bad penny. There's also a great YouTube video by the Central Maine Ghost Hunters where they read a version of this legend, and then they go exploring Sabatis searching for a cemetery with a well in the back. At Sanborn Cemetery, they trek into the woods behind the boneyard and found what looks like the ruins of a small shack, possibly a barn, and some stones that may have been part of a well at some point. It's not conclusive, but it's something, which is why we place the story here. I love how thorough the Central Maine ghost hunters were in exploring these cemeteries. They asked all the right questions. I mean, if they found a definitive well still intact... It would have put some more meat on these bones. Exactly. But we tip our hats to them for looking. We did search the newspaper archives and read Mark LaFlame's October 4th, 2007 Halloween feature for the Sun Journal titled Fear, which continues on to another page with campfire tales and local urban legends. But the Sabatis Well story wasn't in the print edition. It was online, which, as you said, Ray, is gone. So I dug into the Internet Archive Wayback Machine and found LaFlame's original online article from October 14th, 2007, titled Local Urban Legends. And to be fair, he added the subheadline that may or may not be true. Mm. He titled this story, All is Well. <laughs> it's 192 words long, and those three short paragraphs grew into something that's been repeated over and over to the point where people are actively looking for the well. And now we've made a podcast episode about it. We explored this story because we thought it was an opportunity to show the life and death of a legend 15 years after it was born. And the irony is, this isn't the end of the Sabatis Well story. I mean, for some people it will be. They'll cross it off their list. But plenty of legend seekers won't hear this episode. And it may live on a while longer. We don't get to decide which legends live or die, Ray. 
but we can explore them as deep as we can dive and call them like we see them. That we can. And that brings us to After the Legend, where we explore this week's story a little more. Sometimes, veer off course. Sometimes. <laughs> After the Legend is sponsored by our Patreon patrons. This group of insiders get early access to new episodes. They're part of a private community that gets to comment on our regular episodes, plus all of the bonus episodes and content we provide just for them. It's only three bucks per month, like buying Ray and I a fast food burger each mm. month that we have to split because <laughs> three bucks doesn't go very Sad. far. It is. If you can help the cause, we'd appreciate it. Head over to patreon.com slash New England Legends to sign up. So uh, we added a link to the Wayback Machine uh, archive of Laflame's article on our website. Just click on episode 262 if you'd like to read it. Um, And it's worth noting, too, the movie The Ring, Mm. 2002, uh, is when that came out. So I'm wondering if that was sort of part of the inspiration. Maybe. There was a well. The well. The dominant well in that. Girl came out of the well. Yeah. Great movie. It's a fantastic movie. They made a second one, too. It wasn't that good, but. And that was a remake of a Japanese horror film. Right. Where they cover the, you know, the girl's hair is over her face, and that's like a. a, What year was that? Oh, before this, right? Because this was a, uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know when the Japanese one was made. I wonder if there was a well in the Japanese one. Uh, well, yeah, I think so. I okay. think that was a pretty prominent thing. But the whole notion of like the well, right? Wells are scary inherently. Well, well they are. Well, well, yeah. well. You, you, you know, know it you, makes sense. Yeah. Well, you look, you look down, and you're like, on the one hand, that's your life down there. Well, Water. there's so many stories down there too. Yeah. I mean, as a kid, you make up so much looking down a well. I've mm-hmm. looked down many, and instantly you're making things up in your head. Yeah. There's bodies down there. There's an alligator down there. You lean a little too far forward, yeah, and, mm-hmm, and then you're down there. Uh, so we get asked a lot: uh, are these are these stories true? Are any of them true? Right? We get asked that, and uh, I usually answer like almost all the time they're true, like well, to some extent. Right? They originated from something. some kind of truth, yeah, something, and it gets passed around, uh, and that's why they stick around. But this story, I got to tell you, it, it burns my biscuits a little bit, Ray. <laughs> um, so it's just not my way to make something up. You know, it's one thing to say it's a legend, the story's going around town about this thing, but I can't prove it or disprove it. Mm. But in this case, we were sort of able to disprove it. Um, And then here's the thing, though. Fine. You know, a a newspaper reporter and columnist made up some stories. Um, He's also a fiction writer, by the way. But they were posted on the Sun Journal's website. Yeah. Which... Which is news. That's a and now news. it becomes fake news because some people only read the headlines. Right. They don't read the fact that it's here's a made up story that I'm posting on the it, it didn't the website explicitly say made up story. It said urban legends that may or may not be true. And if you can click on the link and see the original article from our website, um, you know, and there's a bunch of stories in there. And he mm-hmm. just made them up and they added local landmarks to make them sound sure you know legitimate. But it's on a newspaper website, which is going to legitimize these stories mm. in a way that if it was on like some personal blog, you'd go, ah, okay, someone's having some fun. Right. But it was on the, the newspaper website. And so, um, so I, I, that sort of, you know, troubled me um, because it's a bummer, of course. Once you make something up, well, what else do you make up? You know what I found interesting was that he said, I probably made that up. That's how he answered you. Mm, yeah. He knew or he didn't know. Like yeah. he knew yeah. that he made it up. But he said, I probably made that up. And it's off the website now, and, I, you know, he didn't want to talk to us. And, and whatever. Like, you know, he must have his reasons. He doesn't know who we are, I guess. I, I, well, I don't know who we are. But uh, he must have his reasons, and that's okay. Um, yeah, sure. But I, I do – I wanted to do this story because it's kind of cool that we can trace the birth and then put an ending on it. You well, know? I asked you a couple of weeks ago, you know, will we see legends 100 years from now based in today's – world here we are and here we are here right we are, i mean yeah. this one died yeah but it's, well, it's true not, it's not dead we, we can think we're putting the death nail in the coffin right now but the re- the reality is it's going to live on in these books about main legends it's going to live on in blogs people are not everyone right you're gonna be shocked not everyone listens to us no but they're gonna search and they're gonna find us <laughs> i hope right so. i hope so you know and just be like hey you know and by the way of all the stories we've done 262 if you're counting mm. um this is the only one that I can think of off the top of my head anyway, that we absolutely are able to conclusively mm. sort of disprove. Well, because it's hard to disprove the, the older ones. Right. Not yeah. enough research. Right. Or we, we can't talk enough. to the people. Right. Exactly. Right. And this is probably one of the more recent ones. Yeah. I would think. I mean, I think we went back to the 70s, 80s, yeah. maybe in a few sure. of them. Something in your town, which was That's right. recent. That was the UFO, right? There, we did a UFO story from the 80s. I think, yeah. So there's, there's but a this few this was things. 2000. 
one, one, two thousand one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, this is the most recent. Yeah. So uh, have you heard of Slender Man? Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, my my kids are terrified of Slender Man, and there's a movie now, I guess. Yes. So Slender Man is so fascinating to me because um, this sort of reminded me a little bit. So Slender Man was born on the internet in two thousand nine mm. by uh, a guy named, who has a screen name Victor Search. There's a website called Something Awful. And it's it was remember message boards oh yeah before Facebook and everything yeah so this message board said um, uh, create paranormal photographs right like it was a contest yeah like make them up and so this guy made up a couple of photos black and whites from like the eighties or something mm-hmm. and kids in a playground and then you see this tall slender sh- shadowy man mm-hmm. standing in the back and it says you know the, the little short description the last photo before these kids all disappeared you That's know creepy. And, and you're just like ooh right it was great it, <laughs> even if it's fake yeah, he, you know it still hits you and it was fake and yeah. he often said it was fake it was he was doing the contest and um did he put it in the legitimate newspaper though no okay, he just good. put it on a website and there it was <laughs> and so from there though slender man took off and it became a comic book and it became a game and now it's like you said it's a movie mm. and the scariest thing is that in uh, actually I, I wrote this down may 31st 2014 in wisconsin uh three 12 year old girls had just left a sleepover Two of those 12-year-old girls took a knife and stabbed the third 19 times oh my God. to become proxies of the Slender Man. They believed this sacrifice of, of their friend would make them you know, mm. uh, in line with, with Slender Man, something they believed in in some way. Miraculously, the girl didn't die oh, after good. being spot, stabbed, stabbed 19 times. Uh, but tell that girl who was stabbed 19 times there's no such thing as slender man he was just invented on the internet right like she got stabbed because someone believed in it yeah and so slender man has arguably leapt off the internet and it's becoming reality for different people and that's just one story there's other stories where, where people you know kid tried to burn his house down in florida because slender man told him to and you know he's becoming uh, a thing like we've we've turned him into still something. too yeah right and and the movie's not going to help there's co- countless right. youtube videos uh, I was actually just watching one the other day with yeah. Annie. She watches the kids like, oh, I found this video. Let's check it out and see if Slender Man's real or not. And you see, like, this guy's yelling for his daughter in the background. Right. And then you see the camera shaking as it's running down the the, oh, the, the road. That's good. And then there's a field, and there's a girl hand in hand with Slender Man walking through the field. Oh, that's good. It's creepy, but this kid was trying to make everybody believe that this was real found footage. Who's you're looking for your lost child? Are you running down the street, pointing the camera at the uh, road as you're running? Right, you right. throw the camera and you're yeah, you're uh, you're going to look for your kid. But um, they are still trying to make us believe, which yeah. is dangerous because look what happened. Yeah, yeah, right. You know? People are people are getting killed. They're committing suicide for yeah. Slender Man. So it is interesting that we live in a time when um, you know I, I've said all along, you know, folklore works the same today as it did 200 years ago. Mm-hmm. It's just, it, it can go so much faster now. Yeah. You know, 200 years ago, oh, like, yeah. I would tell you a story over the fence, right? I'd be like, oh, hey, you know, Ray, this crazy thing. The Jingle Jangle right. guy. What was his name? Jingles. Yeah. Jingles yeah. the, uh, uh, remember cling, him? Cling Clang. Cling Clang, yeah. Cling, yeah. I mean, that's a story that get out, yeah. but over time, because yeah. every house was so far apart. You weren't going to talk to another soul for another week, <laughs> right. so you'd tell them. And, you know, it took months and years for, for legends to spread. Today... You can be like, holy cow, I, this thing happened to me at this cemetery last night. And you post it, and it gets share, 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 yeah. share, share. And it's viral, and everybody's hearing about it. Other people are going to the cemetery. So that process can happen in what used to take months and years, decades even, can happen in hours. Mm. Um, so uh, so we live in an interesting time. But also, um, because it's the Internet, you can track these things. Right. You can usually trace it. You can go see Victor Serge's post. It's still there. Mm. You can go to the website and be like, well, there it is. Um, you know, we were able to find because of the, you know, internet archives, we were able to find, you know, Mark's original article mm. and, um, and see it. So, um, but it's there and this one, you know, is, is still gaining legs. I'd be curious what Mark thinks, you know, that every time it pops up or every time he gets an email, he said in the email response, I get this a lot. Yeah. Um, so I wonder, you know, what he thinks every time, like some new book comes out and he's like, yep, there's my story. Here I mean, he again. should be proud of himself because it's a fun story. Yeah, it's totally. a fun legend. Yeah. So it's a fun little story. I just, and he made that up on his own. I just sort of wish it would have been placed in a, in the fiction <laughs> category. And then, um, but then if he didn't do that, it would have never been viral. 
Please be sure to subscribe to our podcast because, hey, it's free and we don't want you to miss a thing. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts. If you have a story you think we should check out, please reach out to us through our website, through our super secret Facebook group, or on social media. Most of our story leads come from you. We would like to thank our sponsor, New Audio Herbals. We'd like to thank our Patreon patrons, and our theme music is by John Judd. Until next time, remember, the bazaar is closer than you think. Mm-hmm.